Moin Moin, hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, Dawn Spector here today with something completely different. Yes, this is audio related, but it is not strictly speaking a review. It does not have to do anything directly at least with IEMs, with amplifiers or anything else. We still need to talk about it though, because this is one of the most, uh, I don't want to say underrated, but overseen topics in audio, especially among real enthusiasts. And today we're talking about diminishing returns, the bane of audio free society, as I would call them. And uh, yeah, this video is uh, roughly speaking uh, split into three parts. First, of course, we need to establish what are diminishing returns, and we do this on an not scientific level, but we're taking graphs to look at those. Then we need to establish why does it matter to know about it or like why do diminishing returns matter? And last but not least, what to do about it? Because yeah, when we've established there's something, of course we need to do something with it, right? So let's get directly into it. And yeah, what are diminishing returns? Uh, first, um, I will not bore you with the theoretics, with the uh, economical theoretics here. There's a lengthy Wikipedia article about it because, yeah, the term diminishing returns come from comes from economics. Sorry about that. And yeah, there's a lot of implications here and a lot of factors to look at. And yeah, there's different curves that you can take as a measure here. And this is not strictly speaking a law like gravity. I think it's also what the article says here, but it's something that has been seen over and over and over again in basically every field. And it also translates to technology here. So CPUs, graphics cards, RAM, whatever you look at it, diminishing returns exist in all of those forms. And like it's basically everywhere. And in audio specifically, they hit very, very, very hard. And uh, yeah, uh, let me directly throw you on the graph now. So. This is the basic graph of diminishing returns. And as you can clearly see here, first it starts rising very rapidly, then it gets a bit slower and slower, and slower, and slower, and slower, until it basically completely stops. That's the gist of diminishing returns. If we just look at how much you get, we don't look at the relativeness, like how much uh, basically you put in, how much you get out, because that wouldn't be a reducing curve. We just look at how much performance you get, specifically in audio here, right? This is just through the lens of audio what we are looking at. That means you put money in, you get performance out, but the more money you get in, the less performance you get out per money. So this curve will flatten out and there's a kind of vertex point in the middle at which the uh, amount you put in gets higher than the performance you get out. This is basically could also be called a break even point. Like until this point, it makes sense to invest more. And after that, pure theoretically seen, right? It does no longer make sense to invest more money because you get less out when that you pay. So uh, just give you a very crude example here. So if you would spend Ten dollars for an IEM, right? You spend ten dollars more, you get a ten percent better IEM. This would be linear growth. So you get ten percent more for ten dollars you spend. That's still good. Like, yeah, but that makes sense. And even better would be, right, if you go from let's say five to ten dollars, you get maybe twenty percent more. That's more than linear increase in performance. That's nice. However, if you come to a certain point, the vertex here, or yeah, the break-even point. I will not go into details now about how much this is. After that, if you spend $10, maybe you only get 8% better performance or even worse, only 5%. So that's the gist of diminishing returns. And if you go this line further up, there's something that I personally, like this is not scientifically been any term or anything else, right? I personally call this the zone of no return. Basically means you can spend $1,000 extra, but you just get half a percent more or two percent more. So it really does not matter. If you're in this zone, it's not about the performance. It's not about the returns you get. It's more about, yeah, the not, sometimes it's not lifestyle because sometimes you get features, right? That's later on we talk about those, but it's no longer about performance at all. And you should avoid paying like prices that go in this zone or you should avoid trying to be in this, you know, being in this zone at all because it's literally just wasting money. Quick intersection here. Um, one thing that I actually forgot so far in the video. This entire thing is theoretical, right? There are though definitely products out there that do not follow this trend. That means you 
could buy an IEM for, let's say, theoretically, a few thousand dollars, that actually performs worse than an IEM for only $20. That can happen, and it has happened. There are IEMs out there, and I will not link to a critical here, but I just tell you a critical lesson video, really good one, about an 1BA IEM that was traded for more than 1,000, and it's just 1BA, and it measured horribly, it sounded horribly. These things can happen, but these are outliers, and in this assumption, we do not look at those, because if we would, uh, let's just throw in a graph here, yeah, diminishing returns could, could look something like this. And just for the sake of simplicity, I will not talk about any cases like that. We just assume the more money you pay, the better things or the more features you get out. And that is then, why does it matter? Yeah, of course, uh, after we've established what this is, the whole idea of knowing about diminishing returns, specifically in audio, is for you to make better informed decisions that you can spend your money more wisely that you only buy what you actually want and need. Those are two different things, right? You can want something, but you might not need it. Or you can need something, but you might not want it. Those are different things. For the simplicity here, we assume these are both the same. Uh, just give you an example here. So. Assume you're traveling and you really need a headphone that reduces the horrible noise in the London subway. Well, you should definitely look for something that has good isolation. And here, probably also active noise cancelling does help. So what you want might not be the same thing because hell, like I know we're all enthusiasts, right? So maybe we want something that sounds really good. However, the best noise cancelling headphones do not sound good. Like even if you're generous. They are not great, and the best like noise cancelling that you would probably get at like Sony's or so, they sound like ass. So this is not the same, right? The want is not the same as the need. And yes, you can fix the want here, at least with these headphones, by equalizing, but it's not the same thing. So, it uh, does matter, because we need to know where on the graph we are, like how much more does it make sense to spend on a product in order to get more performance, and when does it stop? When do we no longer get anything out of it? This is the gist of diminishing returns or why it helps to know where we are on the graph. And just for the lows, <laughs> I plotted a graph for you roughly how I would see the IEM market at the moment. So starts at like one dollar because yeah, you need to pay something to get something back, right? Mm -hmm. Goes to five and thirty. And the vertex point or the uh, yeah point there is between like thirty and sixty dollars to me at the moment. After that it starts to get significantly slower in terms of what performance you get for the price. And the sweet spot and how much you should invest in my eyes at the moment, just because I've listened to quite a few IEMs and I try to be as objective as possible. And there's more to it, like you can't be purely objective when it comes about audio because every year is different. Like some people have some hearing disabilities somewhere, but we might not even know about. Some people don't like it. Some people are sensitive. Those are all different factors, but just from how I see it in terms of detail and what you usually get as audio performance. I would say the sweet spot before you come to the uh, no return zone is between $150 and $220. Everything after that is not giving you much more details out of it. Like you probably will get some better articulated uh, treble extension or you get a bit better timbre overall. But these are like really, these are the last few percents we are talking about. And in my eyes, it does not make sense to spend this money here. And that's why does it matter, right? So now we come to the last question. What do we do about it? So we've established where diminishing returns are. We know why it's important, but what do we do? First and foremost, and most importantly, like really, it's very important. Know what you actually want and what you need. Know your use case. Know what you really want to have. Do you want an HD 600? That is a like, very mid-centric headphone with a bass roll-off. That's yeah, like relatively decently tuned. Do you want that? But you also need it. Is this a different use case? If you are mixing, mastering, maybe you want something that is a bit more revealing, something that has a bit more energy at 8 or 9K, so you know where faults in the mixing might be, so it does not pierce people's eardrums later. Different things. Know your use case. It's very important. And again, this extends to features. Because, as I said before, if you are commuting every day to work and you go to the London subway for, or with the London subway, for instance, it's horribly loud. Get something that protects your hearing. Get something that's the best passive isolating and then maybe still has active noise cancelling. So you really know what you need in these cases. 
So again, this is one of those things, the need might not be the same thing as your want. So try to find a balance between what you need and what you want. Because hell, you can spend a zillion money in this hobby, but you don't really get what you need. So it's really important that you know what you actually want and need. Like really pinpoint this first before you go on and splurge. Like pinpoint this before you spend any money whatsoever. And then the next thing, um, yeah, I quickly have to take a critical because critical says, when we just talk about pure audio for things, right? You don't pay for tuning. And in a sense, he's correct. Theoretically, you could have any tuning at any price point, right? That's theoretically possible. However, because tuning actually costs money for the uh, R&D department or for the engineers, usually you don't get the best tuning at low prices. And to prove critical further wrong, he specifically has products that are tuned in cooperation with Clinical that are more expensive than the non clinical tuned products. So you definitely do pay for tuning. And especially in this hobby where I want to say the more neutral, but it's like Harriman, Treblish, tiny bit less than that, or diffuse field, whatever you call neutral here, right? Those are t uh, targets that are not so easy to reach usually. So you definitely do pay for tuning. And it's here again important to know, know what you want and what you need. If you do work with your headphones, don't get something that is too color, that won't help you. But if you want a really bass boosted headphone or IEM, yeah, that HD600 will not cut it for you. So it's again really important to know what tuning you actually prefer. And the only way to do this is you have to try things. This is the only way how to go forward. You have to try what you like and what works for you, what works for your music. And this is also a very important factor what I sometimes hear people missing when they talk about how much money you should spend. You can have really basic headphones at really low prices. So you don't need to spend a zillion euros for a very basic like high-end bass headphone. Not necessary. But if you want to, right, like, yeah, go ahead. Like, absolutely, it's your money. I'm not taking, telling you to not do it. But just be aware that you will not get significantly more out of it because diminishing returns. And uh, yeah, then uh, the last part I have to note here, and that is also very important what to do about, in what, what to do about chapter. Uh, whenever you do research, because I can't take away the task of you doing research about your products, this is still something you need to do for every purchase you want to do that is not mega cheap. Do your research. I can't take away those things from you. I can only tell you or guide you a tiny bit in the right direction. And yes, I'm trying this with this video here. and. Again, there's something that is a um, bias, uh, that is inherent in every human. And everybody likes different things uh, because we grew up differently. We learn different things. We are different persons generally. So knowing that every person has a bias, even though we try to be as objective as possible, there's always a bias. And especially in audio, there's an other problem that I will tackle in another video that is more general. The sunk cost fallacy is really, really, really strong in this hobby. And knowing this, that this also exists with a bias in combination with diminishing returns is very important when you also do your own research. Because some people that might tell you, this cable sounds awesome, might think that because we have some cost fallacy influenced bias, but the truth might not be the same. And it's really important to distinguish between where on the, uh, again, diminishing returns scale we are. Will you really get anything here? Does science tell you you will get anything at all? Or is it just some bullshit? Maybe? Yeah, end of this. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, That's everything I have to tell about diminishing returns. Uh, if you have questions, if you have criticisms, if you have feedback, if I missed a point that is important in this specific topic, please leave a comment. And with this, Storm Spectre, out.